When I first played through Elden Ring, I thought Fia and the Deathbed Companions filled the stereotypical roles of Ladies of the Night, and I was pretty tired of the trope of a subservient woman being little more than a harlot in a FromSoft game. And at first glance, that's exactly the role Fia seems to play. Another woman who seems to exist to fulfill the desires of a man, though in Fia's case, bafflingly, the man she seems to serve isn't even alive anymore. However, as they say, looks can be deceiving and never judge a book by its cover. Welcome to Fear the Old Lore, where we examine the English and Japanese of the games for more insight into their lore. In this episode, we'll examine Fia and the role of the Deathbed Companions. Although Fia appears to be meek and docile at first, and her role as a Deathbed Companion seems akin to that of a whore, Fia plays a much more active role in her story compared to a character like Ariana, and kills the older D-brother Darian to gain the curse mark of death to accomplish her mission. It would be easy to paint Fia as more of a femme fatale because of this, but I think doing so would overlook other aspects of her character. Like many others, I initially assumed part of the reason deathbed companions were reviled for their work was because it was vulgar in nature, but this isn't quite right, and I would later learn that more thought and care went into the creation of the lore behind the deathbed companions than I initially expected. According to Fia, in her homeland, being embraced by a deathbed companion was a sacred act in which the deathbed companion takes in the warmth of another to produce a blessing that allows one to forget any aches and pains. By alleviating the dying of their pain, they'd be able to rest in peace and their souls wouldn't become mired in the ire which would cause them to transform into a curse. This is reinforced from a few other sources. According to perfumer Trisha's Spirit Ashes, Trisha was once known as a healer who dedicated her efforts to treating misbegotten, omen, and all those seen as impure. When her efforts failed, she was their companion as they died, watching over them to ensure that they could pass peacefully, free of pain. And Trisha's tale is a tale akin to the origins of deathbed companions. War surgeons performed a similar role with a dagger talisman saying, White-garbed field surgeons came to the aid of friend and foe alike by dealing a final deadly thrust to spare them from the prolonged agony of a mortal wound. It's said in the Family Head's familiar rancor that anguish invites a cursed wrath, and in the Feathered Branch Sword Talismans, the heart sings when one draws close to death, and clinging tenaciously to life renders up a death worth offering. What this tells us is that life is sustained through having strong feelings, desires, and emotions, and that deathbed companions, like perfumers and war surgeons, allow the dying to let go of such emotions. When Fia first offers to hold the tarnished in her arms, she says, Great champion, would you allow me to hold you? But briefly, perhaps you might share with me some of your lifely vigor and your stout-heartedness. Doing so will grant me the warmth of a champion, and you, I am sure, will bear a Baldekin's blessing. Her Japanese dialogue differs slightly, in that instead of taking the player's stout-heartedness, Fia says she'll be taking some of their Ishii or Will along with their lively vigor. But just saying that Ishii means Will sells it a bit short. In addition to Will as in willpower, Ishii also means intent or volition, in the sense of having the drive to move or act upon one's desire. Thus, when Fia embraces the Tarnished and absorbs some of their HP to produce her Baldekin's blessing, the game is telling us that one's will is intertwined with their life in Elden Ring. For long-time viewers of my channel, this should come as no surprise, and this relationship is even made explicit in previous FromSoft titles like Bloodborne, where HP is described as the power or will to survive. This is also meant to tie into Roger's dialogue in which he says the way those who live in death touched upon a flaw in the Golden Order was by fervently desiring to live again, though this understanding is more limited to the Japanese version of the text. Roderica expands upon the idea in a roundabout way. I can see how and why immortal essence exists, a spirit under the golden order. I can understand their yearnings, what they become drawn to. Although spirits aren't alive in a traditional sense of the word, merely by having a yearning or desire to live, they're able to persist as immortal essence under the golden order. In other words, a spirit with the desire to live isn't truly dead, since in death there is only peace, for in death there can be no sensation. 
If a deathbed companion can take in the warmth and lifely vigor of a number of champions and share it with the deceased to grant them a second chance at life, this could potentially circumvent the need for Erdtree Burial and put them at odds against the adherents of the Golden Order like the Brothers D. So while in a sense, Via's work of sharing the warmth of the champion she lies with with others is vulgar, and is similar to prostitution on its surface, there is a surprising amount of dignity to it and the depth behind the roles of the deathbed companions. Via sympathized with those who live in death because of her position, and like Roger and Roderica, realized that the dead just wanted to stay alive. Thus she set out on her mission to embed the principle of life within death into the Order by taking the remnants of Godwin's warmth and lifely vigor and transforming it into a mending rune. On one hand, I'd almost expect Fia to want to alleviate the suffering of the dead by accepting their desires as a deathbed companion so they can rest in peace, but I think Fia's compassion extends beyond mercy killing, and so she would gift everyone life anew. But then this raises the question, is a life within death worth living? Or is it one filled with pain and suffering from the loss of one's original life? It would have been nice if there was a little more info to go along with each of the mendings, but it seems like it's all left to individual interpretation. So then, do you think Fia's ending is meant to be a good one or a tragic one? I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comment section. And if you want to discuss more lore, feel free to join the Discord. The link is in the video description. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. I'd also like to thank all my patrons and channel members for their continued support in helping the channel grow. You can become one for as little as $1 a month and be granted permanent access to the secret Discord channel where you can see pictures of what's been described as the, the world's blurriest dog. dog, or early access to my scripts and videos. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and remember, fear the old lore.